Hi everyone, I'm Yasha, and welcome to the fourth episode of Election Scoop. Today we'll be talking about the election held in Utah's 3rd District. Representative Jason Chaffetz represented the seat from 2009 until 2017. But on May 18th, he announced that he would be resigning, effective June 30th, to sign on as a contributor for Fox News. It's a little strange to see someone resign in the middle of their term to make that transition, but that was his decision, and therefore an election was called for November 7th, 2017, to fill the seat. In Utah, candidates can get on a party's primary, either by gaining 7,000 signatures or getting the party's endorsement at the convention. Initially, 15 Republicans and 4 Democrats announced their candidacy, but out of all the Democratic candidates, None got the necessary number of signatures, and so the party convention's nominee, Dr. Kathy Allen, completely avoided a primary altogether. On the Republican side, former member of the Utah House, Chris Herod, obtained the nomination for the party on the fifth round of voting by a ballot of 414 to 338. However, John R. Curtis, mayor of the city of Provo, and Tanner Ainge, son of basketball and baseball player Danny Ainge, gathered enough signatures to force themselves into a primary runoff. The primary was held on August 15th, the same date as the Alabama Senate primary. With 91% of the vote reporting, Mayor Curtis won the election with 40% of the vote. He won, most likely, because of his popularity in his home city, Provo, which contained a large majority of the population of his district. Herod followed with 31% of the vote, and Ainge brought up the rear with 28%. Therefore, Curtis won the election, and he and Allen are facing off in the general election. There is one more interesting factor to consider. The United Utah Party and its candidate, Jim Bennett, were ordered to be put on the ballot after initially being rejected. Jim Bennett is the son of the late Utah Senator Bob Bennett, a very influential longtime figure in Utah state politics. So it'll be interesting to see how his party fares in the coming election. Polls have shown him at about 5 to 6% of the vote, with Allen at 20%, and other candidates adding up their numbers too, with Curtis in the lead at a surprisingly weak 50%. Overall, however, this is a reliably Republican district. It has overwhelmingly supported Republicans for the last 20 years, with GOP candidates putting up margins of victory that are more than 25%, and have been doing so for every election since 1998. Utah itself has a pretty interesting party history. The Mormon Church used to select candidates, no matter which party they were. But when a Jewish person was elected governor of Utah in 1917, officials in the church called for an end to the church's control of political candidates. Nevertheless, voting based on religious beliefs remains a key reason why Republicans do so well in Utah these days, since many of the social conservative views the church holds are in line with GOP lawmakers. With Utah Governor Gary Herbert and the Salt Lake Tribune's endorsement, Her Curtis's message to reduce government spending and introduce a more free market approach to health care are popular with the Utahns in his home district. Curtis has also gotten donations from conservative groups, unlike the Republican primary when they were mostly against him. And as the 16th most Republican district in the whole country, we can fairly safely predict that the winner will be the Republican candidate, John Curtis. So that's what's going down in eastern Utah on the election on November 7th. We'll be seeing how the United Utah Party affects turnout and voters, as well if, as if Democrats are going to be able to improve at all in some of the reddest seats in the nation. So thanks for watching, and remember, don't forget to vote.